Hi, welcome everyone. I'm excited to introduce to you uh, Denise Elizabeth Byron, who I gave you some information about already. She's here to speak with us about all the exciting and sometimes turbulent things that are going on this year and indeed this whole new decade of 2020. And um, we are blessed to have you here with us, Denise. Thanks so much for being thanks here. For that. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh, I'd love to start with you telling the group a little bit more about yourself so we can get to know you a bit more before we dive into everything that's going on. I told them a little bit about um, your work with uh, Sensuous Wisdom, Champion of Women, and astrology and numerology and that you've started that since a very young age but i'd love to get a bit more information from you from your perspective okay well it's true i did uh, grew, i grew up with an astrologer so i've been absorbing astrology since i was born we won't say how many decades that is but we'll, <laughs> we'll say it's a lot <clears throat> and um i love astrology numerology i love approaching life with um, that cosmic support. And that's how I've always been ever since I was really little. And I, I think a lot of, I'm sure a lot of your um, listeners can really relate to this because when we're young and we're faced with challenges and we're sensitive people, we call upon other aspects, other ways of understanding the world. So it makes more sense. And so from a young age, I was able to move through different layers of energy. Um, and I was thinking of a funny story, but I'll wait. <laughs> and um, <laughs> having that desire to understand why things happen the way they do. And, you know, as a child, you really do want to know why, why, why. That was always my favorite question. Why? Right. Why? Um, as an adult, what the way I approach it is we can look to see the influences. We can look to see um, possible reasons why things happen the way they do. And so whether I'm coaching, mentoring, teaching, consulting, my whole basis of understanding is that there's this whole realm of support for us. So much support beyond what we can see, beyond sometimes what we can feel. Although those of us here, you know, listening right now and watching right now, we're probably more prone to being able to feel, hear, see, know, sense things around us um, that maybe, you know, not everybody does. And so one of the things I love to do is just say, okay, what are you sensing right now? What are you noticing right now? What's happening right now for you? And then what's happening in the collective? And then look at the cosmic maps. And cosmic for me includes numerology. It includes astrology. It includes the other realms. It includes a lot of what you do, actually all of what you do. Um, when we're working with the earth, we're also working with the cosmos because the earth is part of the cosmos. So right. having an opportunity to check in to all these different realms and understand we're not alone in this. We are... Yeah. We are truly, so I skew towards us being supported even in the most challenging of times. And mm. I don't think anybody's going to say, oh yeah, we're in the best times ever. <laughs> you know? No, no, no. I'd say very transformative time, but maybe not the best might not well, be. Yeah. We may maybe look best. back on it and think it was much easier than who knows what's coming. Yeah. But. Well, no, and you know, transformative is an excellent word. And when we get into talking about specifics, um, you're right on. If they're probably, well, I can say for certain that we haven't had this transformative of a time in over 500 years. Mm. It sure does feel that. that way. It sure does feel that way. And um, absolutely in all of the, I've done lots of, lots of sessions with you, which were absolutely um, inspirational and informative um, and really helped to understand and unravel the whole year. So you guys mm -hmm. should definitely take the opportunity to contact Denise directly and have a session with her because it's amazing. Um, but one thing that is true is that, um, and, and what I really love about you is that you started from a very young age, recognizing that these other realms were there to support you and to help you. 
And not all of us know that. For example, I didn't really realize that until I was much older and I really could have used that support. So that's really a gift mm -hmm. that you came in with that, uh, you know, a I was, state, I would say. Well, and it's interesting <laughs> you bring that up because um, thank you for saying that, you know, the birth chart, which is a lot of what people understand is their birth chart, um, transforms throughout our lifetime. We have transits that affect our birth chart. We have progress charts, all of these different layers. In my birth chart, it does show a deep Pluto connection, which is those other realms, those deep mm -hmm. realms into the earth, you know, and into the soul and into the cosmos. As a child, you don't always know what to do with all of that. So I was really lucky because I think every child is born with that connection and with yeah, that sure. intuition and with those um, senses, if you will, the extra senses. I, I seriously feel like we are literally born with everything and then things start to shut down as needed in the environments that we find ourselves in. And I don't know if. Um, many of the people listening and watching today can relate to this, but unfortunately for sensitive people, the, it is easy to start shutting it down pretty quickly in order to survive. Absolutely. And so I have so much empathy for that and so much compassion. And in my case, I had to open it up because I didn't have, I didn't have anywhere else to go with it. It was sort of survival through leaning into right. what was available. And, you know, I think a lot of people feel that way right now, which is why I think a lot of people are really coming online, opening up and, and exponentially, I see people's intuition just like, <laughs> you know, it's taken me my whole life to get here. And everyone's <laughs> like opening up and like, wow, wow. Okay. All right, here you are. Um, you're there, and so we do have this transformation energy right now available to us for for healing and opening and receiving. And really, um, it's kind of what I keep getting is the transporter beam in uh, Star Trek. It's like <laughs> taking us from one place to the next, intuitively, energetically. Um, and this is the work that you're, you know, this is what you're doing with people is you're really supporting them as their bodies change, as their mm -hmm. energy bodies change, as everything in them is seeking to find that next level and then the level beyond that. And it's exponentially changing, as you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, 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 and some of what my guides have shown me, the earth guides have shown me that we are going through this very, very long, slow process of becoming uh, less physical, you know, more, I wouldn't say disembodied because it's, it's almost like full embodiment and then mm -hmm. there's less physicality to it. It's mm -hmm. a long process. It takes thousands mm -hmm. of years, which is really a blink of an eye in other realms, but in this realm, it feels very slow, but it is part of that transition, which we are absolutely in right now. And, mm -hmm. and it, that's why I think it's so important for people to continue to take that bird's eye view of what's happening and not get too bogged down by the day-to-day -day machinations of, and the fear mm -hmm. that's happening because we are on this very long, slow process of evolution um, on every level mental, spiritual, physical, emotional, uh, and it's all important. So, and, and that brings us to what I really wanted to talk to you about today is because there's so much energetically happening. We have a, an eclipse happening today with the moon, correct? Yes, the full moon. Any, yeah, any, sure. uh, any minute now, I guess next hour. Um, next <clears> hour, <throat> we're ushering it in. Yes, and we have a lot happening on January 12th, so I'd love for you to just touch on all of that and, and give us some guideposts to understand what this means. Thanks. Well, um, so much to say. First, I want to say I'm really grateful for the work that you're doing because I, I can't imagine not having you here doing the work you're doing, you know, and, and your clients and the, the people that you teach, your students, they know how you work and they, I'm, I'm certain they are just so thrilled. For anyone who doesn't know this, you're doing a lot of behind the scenes work as well. Mm -hmm. And that kind of comes with the territory, you know, your time in meditation, your time in listening, your time in clearing, cleansing, 
healing, all the things that you're doing, um, really important. So thank you for mm, that. Thank you. So you need it. You definitely need it. Um, I wanted to start a little back and then come forward just a tad. Uh, 12 years ago, I had a dream about 2020 that I is vivid. I won't go through all the details, um, but essentially it was showing that some people were ascending off the planet and some people were staying and you have rainbows all over you, by the way, which is really cool. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> just leave them there. That's great. Um, some people there. were ascending off the planet, um, being lifted by angels and other beings. And some people were staying. And, you know, in, a, in true cataclysmic form, there were earthquakes and fires. And, you know, it was a, a bit of a dream, you know. But I, I remember in the dream feeling like I was being lifted and then plopped right back down. And I was like, oh, and I felt really disappointed when I woke up in the morning that I hadn't made it. Mm. So um, over the years, I've talked to different teachers and different people that I've worked with about this dream. And there's mm. more to it, but that's, that's essentially it. And they've all said the same thing. So I just wanted to say this to everybody here. If you were left behind, if you were not one of the ones who had been lifted off the earth, it's because it's your special mission to stay with the earth during her time of transition and ascension. Absolutely. And so yeah. We're here because our soul's journey has allowed us the opportunity to be here. And mm -hmm. I really want to start with that because it, it really ties into what we're moving through right now, this weekend and beyond, you know, this is a pivotal weekend for sure. So today's eclipse. Every time we have an eclipse, the energy gets set forth for us to travel quickly into parts hitherto unknown. We don't always know. It's like stepping into a wormhole and then heading off into space and then landing somewhere and going, oh, I see how it is. I, I didn't expect this. So there's that energy today. It's very deep and it's very internal. So Whenever we have a full moon, people notice this. It kind of feels crazy. There's mm -hmm. a lot going on. People are emotional. Water full moons are far more emotional. Today's full moon is the most emotional of all the full moons all year. So that's how we're starting the year <laughs> with the most emotional full moon. And so the Cancerian full moon really drops us into what I call the womb space, the work that we do as um, women. And for men, you also have a womb space. It's just not a womb, but there is a space in there that is your power center, just like for women. It's our power center um, located, you know, above the root and around the second chakra. So in that general area for everybody. So we're transported inward in this full moon eclipse. The portal is inside and takes us out into the year. So, uh, you know, for those of us that are going to be very external this weekend, teaching, running households, having businesses, take whatever time you can get and remember that you can ask for the cosmos to support, even if it's just five minutes, just close your eyes, drop in, feel yourself, feel your body, be in your body because this is what we have right now is our, it, this is the vessel that we're in. So feel the body, be in the body, listen to your feelings, ask if there's anything else you need, even if it's five minutes each day this weekend, it's mm -hmm. better than nothing. Mm -hmm. And for those people um, who are able to go and soak in some water. That's a really good thing to do, whether it's a bathtub or okay. a body of water, anywhere. Um, it will work if it's a bathtub. B believe me, the more relaxation, the better. So if you can snuggle up in your bathtub. For those people who are not near the ocean, we're very lucky to be near the ocean. Um, if you're near a stream or other water, that's great too. If you can and you're close enough, take a moment and I do not recommend this on our ocean this weekend because of the surges and the tides. But if you're near like a river or a lake and it's safe to do so, dipping your hands into the water mm -hmm. and, 
and pulling that water up towards you. We can do this um, if you're in a bay and it's safe near the ocean, yeah. or you can just do it in your bathtub, or you can take some water, put it in a lovely bowl, and allow yourself to really be with the water energy of this Cancer full moon. Um, most people know that you can charge all your crystals and rocks and all of that in the full moon. Um, some crystals cannot go in water. It's fine to just leave them out and let them bathe in the full moon energy. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, um, it's we can just leave them out right now in this eclipse energy. They will take on a different um, vibration. Uh, so if I if I was going to leave something out right now during the eclipse, it would it would probably work faster. Mm -hmm. It might have a little. Uh, we're not sure where this is going to go energy in it. That's fine too. It's, it's all very exciting. That's what this year is about. Things are unfolding. We don't know how it's going to unfold exactly. So we're in it. Really um, good for rose quartz possibly to help absolutely. with that emotional healing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Selenite, which I wouldn't put your selenite in water mm -hmm. um, unless you really want to. It does um, break down because it's made from, you know, salt, gypsum and salt. I think, don't quote me on that, but it does break down in the bath. I knew this for a right. fact. Um, I, I have this to I know. stop you for one moment and share something. This is really remarkable. I, I, you just, when you were talking, I just remembered I had a dream last night where I was, I was in the ocean and I was in an inflatable donut and I was bobbing around and then I looked up again and I was in a completely different place. So the water transported me to somewhere completely different. Yeah. And then I went in on the shore and I asked somebody where I was and they said, oh, you're down, you know, a couple miles. Like I had traveled a couple miles mm -hmm. very quickly and without remembering it. It was like going through a wormhole. So <clears throat> there you have it. There you have it. Wow. The Perfect. dream just was right you in did line it. with what you said. <laughs> well, not surprising with your chart that it's a deep internal process and you're getting it through your dreams. We don't need to yeah. reveal the whys about that, but I'm not surprised that it came through your dreams. And it, that's what's happening. So whether it's in your dreams, whether you're conscious of it, we're, we are having this. It is happening right now. And I think being mindful every day, not just today, every day. <laughs> yes, um, we is, try. Yeah, it's super, we'll super best. Yeah. And being really compassionate, you know, anytime we have a full moon, I always tell people be self-love, take care of yourself, be compassionate. Other people are probably having a tough day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I talked to someone at a financial um, advisement office this morning and I just asked her, how's your day going? And she you knows she's being professional. Oh, it's going fine. Uh -huh. I'm like, Oh, well, you know, I know it's a full moon. So I, I just, I hope that it, everything goes well for you today. And she's like, oh, well, that explains everything. <laughs> Did you have her crying by the end of the phone call? <laughs> Not quite. I was only on the phone for a minute. So no. But I think, I think having an opportunity to um, receive our own self-compassion, especially during a Cancerian full moon, mm -hmm. especially for this year. I mean, this is, this is an event it is an event for this year. The new moon that happened last year on December 25th with its eclipse was the first eclipse. So we've gone through two weeks. There's, it feels like the last two weeks has been like a year of its own. Uh -huh. So we've been through the eclipse portal, as they say. This eclipse, energy from an eclipse lasts for at least a month, sometimes two months, sometimes 18 years. It just depends on the cycle that we're in. But right now I would say this eclipse is really relevant for the year. Mm -hmm. um, the full moon energy reminding us of compassion and self-love and self-care um, is relevant forever, but particularly for this year. So Yeah, this year, I think you're absolutely right. Lots of self-compassion and mm -hmm. compassion for others mm -hmm. while they go through their journey and their transformational shifts. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's going to be really important. So I'm glad, glad to hear we're starting off with yeah. an exaggeration well, of that energy. Exactly. And I love mm -hmm. your dream because if we look at your dream, you were floating, you had the support you needed. Mm -hmm. You weren't, you weren't treading water. Let's put no. it that way. There was you no panic. It was just, no, it was like, Oh, 
I'm in a new place. Right. That dream is really instructive for all of us. That is a really good reminder that we are, we are given what we need, even if it's minimal. I went, you weren't on a boat. Right. <laughs> I mean, you kind of have the minimal amount of stuff you could possibly have to stay afloat and be comfortable. So that's very Saturnian. That's well, kind of where we're going right now. I would say that's a really good point. And that is something that I, I would like to emphasize this year is that as human beings on this planet, we are, and everybody, you know, is talks about abundance. We want more. I want more money. I want more fame. I want this. I want that. You know, I want more stuff. And really what the earth is telling us right now is that you've got to cull down. You've got to get rid of what doesn't serve. You've got to get rid of the excess. You've got to stop striving for extra, extra, extra. You don't need to hoard. You, what you need to do is you just need to focus on the here and the now, and you need to only use what you need. Stop using more than you need. Stop accumulating more than you need. And that goes for money, and that goes for uh, food, and that goes for stuff. And <clears throat> certainly, Plastic obviously is is high up on that list, but um, all the conveniences that we have come to uh, think that we need, we really need to start questioning whether or not we need those conveniences, and to start shedding the stuff we don't need. You couldn't have described it better. Okay, <laughs> it's like you have the download. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> Gee, um, I know it's been <laughs> happening. <laughs> whether I want it or not, they keep talking to me. <laughs> Right, exactly. Well, we, I mean, so we are looking at Saturn, we're looking at Pluto, we have a bunch of other planets. So to kind of jump to Sunday, you know, we're going through this weekend. Um, to get technical, we've got Pluto, Saturn, the Sun, Ceres, and Mercury. I think that's close enough. We have a couple others that are close by, but they're all basically at the same degree in Capricorn. Capricorn is truly a, a powerful sign, and we could talk for hours about this. But essentially, what you said is the Capricorn energy is economy, efficiency. Mm -hmm. What do you need? Like the donut in the water. You didn't need right. a yacht. You nope. didn't even need a boat. <laughs> no. You didn't even need a raft. <laughs> you got what you needed, and that's, that's that. Right. <laughs> End of story. So, um, but the Capricornian energy is also extraordinarily devoted. Mm. And um, there is a element of the paternal, uh, which is to not, not to say patriarchal. It's really important to mm. differentiate between those two words. Capricorn does not need to be patriarchal, but it is paternal, which is to say classically that the energy is there for guidance, support, um, what are your goals? How can I help you reach them mm -hmm. in the most efficient way possible <laughs> without excess? Mm -hmm. And do you really need that? No, right. You really do don't. you really, <laughs> really need that? I don't think so. You just think you need that. Right. <laughs> so Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So we've got a natural Saturn placement, which we've had already for a year. So we're used to that energy. And Saturn is our master teacher. So very often you'll hear that Saturn is the planet of karma. It's the planet of lessons, and everybody is aghast when their Saturn returns show up. They're like, oh my God, what's going to happen to me? Well, you know, what's going to happen is you're going to be reminded of why you're here and what it is you came here to learn and what it is you came here to teach. Because we're all teachers. We're all teachers. Every single one of us, whether it's, um, I always say, in the grocery store or in the post office, because it just seems like the most mundane possible things that we're doing. But it's true. You know, when we go to the grocery store and we look the checker, for lack of a better word, in the eye and say, how are you? Yeah. Whoa. I always hear from them, no one ever does that. Thank I you. know. I know. Right? I've been practicing that lately too. Uh, and also I like to do, I go to the post office a lot <laughs> there you to go. ship supplements and herbs to people. Oh, and yeah. at the post office, 
I, I, I love, I hear people complaining in line about how long it's taking and I get there. Mm -hmm. First thing I do is I smile at them mm -hmm. and say something pleasant and how are you? Ask how they are mm -hmm. and say something to mm, crack a smile, help them feel a little lighter because they can hear those people talking about them in line. Can you imagine? How does that feel for that person? It's awful. It's terrible. It's terrible because the humans have come into this place where it's, it's, it's got to happen immediately and it's got to happen right now, right? So um, I love that we are being asked to slow down a little bit mm -hmm. and retool and let mm -hmm. go of that which is superfluous mm -hmm. and just really focus right here and right now and be present. Go to the supermarket and be present with that person. Don't be on your phone and be doing 15 other things. Just be present mm -hmm. and enjoy it. Yes, and in that you are being a teacher, you're being um, you know, a role model, but you're, you know, you're also being a vessel and a vehicle for love you mm -hmm. know, as it flows through you. And ultimately, all the clearing, all the work we're doing, and Saturn likes work, Saturn likes structure, yes. Saturn likes work, Saturn likes systems. Um, if we're going to engage in all of that to cr increase our capacity for love, then it would be good to share it. So, you know, it, it's, it's helpful to remember this. When we're cranky, yeah, maybe we don't go to the grocery store that day. But um, there are moments during this time, and no one's going to be surprised when I say this, that are super duper intense. This is not mm -hmm. a light opening to the decade. And I'm going to just be going out on a limb and saying, you put Saturn in there, that's one thing. You add Pluto, you're like, what? <laughs> so we've been living with Pluto in Capricorn since 2010. It's mm -hmm. not like we're not used to the intensity around economy or the intensity around what are you devoted to. Um, including family and work. It's not just work for, for Capricorn, and I want to be really clear about that. Paternal means, you know, being involved with the family as well. But we're really on this spectrum right now of work and family or work and life, work and creativity. You hear work a lot over here. <laughs> um, work, 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 work. Um, with Pluto, we are here to transform and change. And this is where it gets really interesting. Saturn loves tradition. Pluto is about transformation, death, rebirth, change, um, erotic sexuality, um, money. I mean, Pluto has riches. You know, Pluto is about the richness of the earth, the richness of life. Mm -hmm. um, so Pluto has some really interesting um, aspects that it's bringing in. And Saturn's like, you know, that's all great, Pluto. How are we going to use this? What Practical. are we going to do with right. this? Right? right? Like, good, good. Okay, I get it. We need to change. Shedding our old skin. We've been really being asked to do that for a while. Mm -hmm. What traditions do we want to keep? What are we going to let go of? And uh, I don't want to get too into the political realm at all, but I, I have to say this. You can see if you, so we'll just say it this way. If you look back over the last 10 years from 2010. It was late 2010 that Pluto went in there and then we had a series of in and out, but you look at the change. So we'll just start with that. We're just going to look at the change in our environment across the globe. One of the things that you've said is whether we're looking at government or we're looking at our home or we're looking at community or we're looking at our personal selves, we're living on this planet. And I believe that Pluto is saying, just as you said, like, what are you, what are you planning here? <laughs> it's like, you can't keep going like this. Right. So Saturn comes in and the last time, and this is where it gets interesting for me. The last time Saturn and Pluto were in Capricorn was over 500 years ago, conjunct like this. Wow. Okay. So 500 years of whatever we've been doing for 500 years whether it's a soul's journey or, you know, collectively a humanity journey and the earth journey. Okay. Here's a checkpoint for you. 500 years later. Are you happy with what mm -hmm. is you created? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And so the opportunity exists to change. And that's where I think if we can just stay present to, yeah, it's not easy right now, but that's because internally, personally, and in our, our, we're, we're being asked to look at what we need to change in ourselves, whether it's habits, beliefs, um, uh, you know, uh, anything. I mean, it just depends on where it is in your chart that actually shows you what is being highlighted. Mm -hmm. So like I can say for myself that, um, you know, I'm being asked to change at my very foundation, how I stand in the world, how I root in the world. And you know what happened last year and how I had to learn how to rewalk. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how do I walk in the world? I literally had to learn how to walk again last year in the world. It, it came right. Just Figuratively and literally. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, what? Are you serious? This is really happening at the foundation. So for all of us, there's a place in our chart that allows us more information to drop in. So for those people who know astrology, just look at where Capricorn is in your chart. Look at the predominant house structure that it's in. And you can start to look at what's being highlighted for you. What spectrum are you personally working through? Um, of what wants to stay and what wants to go, what wants to, what can you be more devoted to? How can you in, increase your capacity? And this is a really cool thing that you've been talking about. Increase your capacity for less, which mm -hmm. is very cool when you think about, it sort of sounds like an oxymoron, but you've got increasing because what do you really want? You want energy and love and flow. And so getting rid of all that extra stuff that doesn't need to be here internally and externally. Um, that so makes yeah. the sense. That's yeah. so, so great that the uh, planets are aligning with that energy. It just, mm -hmm. you get, it's just palpable that energy of mm -hmm. uh, needing to um, really take stock of how we've been doing things and to really focus on what's important and bring it back in. Um, a lot of us have, you know, really expanded out. We just bring it back in mm -hmm. and really operate from the core. So mm -hmm. important and such a great message. So thanks for sharing that with us. Well, and thank you for being on message. I mean, the thing is like, you're really deeply listening. So you're aware mm -hmm. of what is being said. Even if you don't know astrology, you're getting the messages really clean and clear. And that doesn't surprise me, of course, but I'm really excited about that. So um, that's super helpful. Yeah. You, so can I ask one quick question yeah, for people who aren't as adept with astrology, but know at least what their chart says, mm -hmm. um, um, just so they have some sort of guidepost, they should look where Capricorn sits in which house of their mm -hmm. chart, mm -hmm. and then look at the aspects and the meanings of that particular house to understand mm -hmm. the way that Capricorn is going to influence them in this mm -hmm. moment. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. So let's just say Capricorn was somebody's first house. Mm -hmm. and their rising sign is Capricorn. And I don't do whole sign astrology, but there are plenty of astrologers who just make the houses equal all the way around. You can choose whatever you want. But let's say his first house is Capricorn. The person with Capricorn rising or first house Capricorn is going to show up in the world very much like what we've been talking about. Devoted, paternal, efficient. Um, needing purpose, needing structure, wanting mm -hmm. to build on that. Um, second house Capricorn is looking at how someone makes their money and their self-value. So understanding themselves as a teacher, someone who's able to create structure and systems and foundations for other people. And then you go on around the chart. So right. it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's, uh, I don't think I have anything on my website, but we can always put up some of my favorite links somewhere um, so people can read about. Sure, I can um, put them in the notes. Yeah. So it, it's, pretty, it's pretty interesting to look at Capricorn also governs um, what we're known for in our journey of this lifetime what we're known for so individually but also collectively so again the universe is saying 
500 years later. What do you want to be known for, people of Earth? Mm. What do you want to be known for in your personal lives, in your communities, and, and et cetera, et cetera? So and if we look personally, it's, you know, we're like, oh, what am I, you know, you can tell in your chart, your 10th house, for those of you that understand that language, your 10th house is what you, what you will be known for. Um, but Capricorn is, is the sign of what we'll be known for. And so I just think the messages are, they're, they're pretty straightforward. They're not hidden as much as they might be if Pluto was in a different sign. Mm -hmm. um, but with it in Capricorn, it feels like it's more transparent. It's more revealed. And um, we, have, we have opportunities. So when we put the sun in the mix of the, um, for Sunday the 12th, Mm -hmm. And beyond, I want to just say, if people are listening to this even a year later, you're still having this energy. It's going to unfold over time. It's like you said. I mean, it's going to unfold over the year for sure, astrologically, but we're starting a new decade. It's, and we're actually starting a new numerological cycle as well. So everything starts in 2020 and it unfolds over a year, nine years, 10 years. It's it's unfolding. It's not just like today. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you add the sun, which is our luminary, you know, it's our illumination. It's a luminary body. It shows us our mission. Okay. So where the sun is in your chart, when you add the sun to this, it's like, wow, it's also about enlightenment. How can we be more enlightened? Mm -hmm. What is our mission? What is our purpose? And in Capricorn, again, it's paring it down. What are the essentials? What do we really need right now to get us to that next stage? Like, you know, the portal, the, the, womb, the, the womb portal or the wormhole, um, all of those things. What, what is going to get us to the next stage? So how can we tap into that enlightened place? And you had talked about light. I mean, your, your whole community is light, light vibes, mm -hmm. lightening it up. and allowing more to come through more light mm -hmm. more energy more healing more love and so the sun is really giving us that beautiful and of course of course the full moon's reflecting it back to us so you know it's pretty amazing to have this moment in time um and then series which is c-e-r-e-s mm -hmm. uh, it is considered a dwarf planet now. It's no longer just an asteroid for anyone who needs to know. Um, in fact, it's ahead of Pluto now, but that's a whole other thing that wow. I'm not okay about. I love Pluto, so I'm not, I'm not thrilled that Ceres got bumped above Pluto, but whatever. <laughs> um, but honoring Ceres, Ceres is named after uh, Demeter, you know, their Roman and Greek names, um, for a mothering um goddess uh about nourishment so uh the word cereal is taken from the goddess name of Ceres, uh -huh. and so uh, interesting Ceres, Ceres, grains so she's the goddess of the grains. so you'll see that image of the goddess holding two stalks you know two big stalks of wheat or some that's Ceres or demeter mm -hmm. and so she's involved she's like how are you nourishing yourselves how are you nourishing the world Mm. So, I mean, we, I know you talk about this within your community, so I'm not, I know I'm not um, saying things people don't already know, but it's like, yeah, how, how are we handling our food? What are we eating? Yes, what are you, very yeah. important. What are you putting into your body, your vessel? Right? <laughs> so she's like, what are you putting into your body? What are you putting into your vessel? And she, you know, she's, she governs. The, the plant realm. Um, so, you know, what herbs, what, what of anything, foods, food is medicine. So what are you putting in your body? I think about that every time I have chocolate. I only have the best chocolate because I know that I have to make sure that when I'm having something that's outside the realm of the most nutritious things on the planet, although chocolate can be nutritious. It does um, have its, yeah, yeah, its anti-cancer and right. uplifting. But, it's, I and mean, I'm kind of being a little silly here, but the idea yeah. is really looking at what you're putting in your body, even if it's something 
that maybe isn't on the big list, mm -hmm. right? Right. Where is it coming from? Where is it sourced? Is yeah. it sourced, you know, from uh, farmers that the people buying it have relationships with? How are they handling whatever, you know, whatever this is? Um, I'm, you know, involved in the chocolate world a lot. So I'm very familiar with how people source the chocolate right. beans and so forth. But this is true for any plant, any plant that you're using, you know where it comes from. You personally, I'm, I'm talking yeah. about, you know, the work that you're doing. That's really, that's, this is an incredible activation for everyone to be reminded of that. Oh, it's so, so important and definitely in alignment with information I've been getting about um, the fact that the food that we're ingesting now, when, unless we're going to small local growers, we know how they are tilling the soil or not tilling the soil, but how they are working with the soil to try and rehabilitate it and grow food that's actually nutritious mm -hmm. and not missing and all the B vitamins and the other thing, like actual nitrogen fixation mm -hmm. is happening in the soil. Mm -hmm. um, so much of the food that we're eating now is just not nutritious in the way that it needs to be for the human body, the way the human body was um, evolutionarily designed and um, evolved with the DNA, right? We, we evolved with all of these microorganisms and with these mm -hmm. plants um, and animals. Uh, and um, we need our food source to be really similar to that in order to assimilate it and be healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and humans are evolving as well, you know, in the moment. And so there will be those humans that will evolve into a place that can handle more, mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> excuse me, of the pesticides and of the things, mm -hmm. herbicides, things that we're putting into the earth. But <clears throat> I really dream of a day where we don't have to worry about that again um, because we're absolutely um, changing the way that people are, um, you know, the way their DNA is behaving epigenetically. We're making huge changes in, 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 in the children and in the grandkids. It, it's going to have a long lasting effect many generations long. So that really needs to be thought about. So any chance, like you said, think locally, eat locally, try and grow it yourself. That's so important. <clears throat> and it is. And, and amend your soil in the best possible way. If you're going to yes. grow it at home, mm -hmm. check, check that soil. Uh -huh. You know, there is so much out there now. We can easily have a soil test to find out what's there. Um, and, you know, for the, I mean, I don't have a lot of, of soil here, but I watch what grows and what mm -hmm. thrives. And I also know what was here before. And I, I watch my neighbors who have a huge garden and they amend their soil every year to make sure that it, it has what it needs. And that's, you know, the foundation, right? Um, we're, we're working a spectrum from what is our foundation to, you know, how we want to be known. You have to have a strong foundation. Mm -hmm. in order to grow. And numerologically, we are in a foundation year. We're in a four year and it's all about foundation. It's also about leadership. So it's both again, I mean, we're just being shown so many messages through everything that we have to amend our soil. We need to know what we're planting in the soil. Mm -hmm. I mean, this literally and figuratively, we need to know what roots are going down which roots we want to go down, which need to come out so that we can, you know, as, as above, so below, or as below, so above, you know, it's like the deeper the roots, the higher we can go. Mm -hmm. And you've, we've got to set our foundations. And that's a lot of the sensuous wisdom practice is, and you know, this, it's like really dropping into your body, feeling what, how are you nourishing yourself? You know, how are you being with yourself so that you can be really strengthening your core? Mm -hmm. This is a year of strengthening your core. Um, and I say that full well knowing that that is, I, I have a little trepidation. So when the trepidation, when the fears come up, what do we do with those? You know, and that's the next step because we feel that in the collective, we feel that people are 
really struggling with fear right now. Mm -hmm. So how to work with that. And it, and it just for me, and again, I know that you have, you know, your tools as well. I just have to come back to a place of knowing that there is a divine energy that is supporting us and that fear is not really going to do me any good that I must turn that over, must continually allow myself to increase my capacity for trust mm -hmm. and faith. Mm -hmm. And that's not always easy these days, not at all. Um, yeah, so I mean, these are the serious tones of this time. And at the same time, the beauty of this time, like no other time in our lifetimes anyway, where we're being given pretty clear information. Yes. It's 2020 information in the sense that it's clear. <laughs> yeah, it's um, not ambiguous. No, you know, they, you know that saying hindsight is 2020? Yeah. Well, okay, people, that's true. Hindsight's 2020, but now we got to go, this is 2020. Let's be in 2020 now. Right. Let's right. get the clarity now, which I, th which I feel like we're getting. And I, I feel I want to make sure that as we move toward the end of our our time um, today, I do want to say that Jupiter is a wonderfully beneficent planet, very full of blessings, and will be traveling in Capricorn all year. So what this That's does, fantastic it news. is, it's good <laughs> news, it's really good news. What it means is that, seriously, as we pay attention, seriously, as we pay attention, <laughs> as we let go, as we allow, ourselves to be changed um, as we allow ourselves to feel life force energy i don't want to let this time go without reminding us that you know pluto also i mean pluto is the richness of the earth it's 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 the richness of the earth it's a real life force it's like when you you know you can watch the plants grow with the time lapse photography yes, yes. that's what it is it's like life force <clears throat> it's moving things and just like um you know plants you know, there's a lot going on in the earth before the plant ever breaks through the surface. Absolutely. There's a whole super highway of information down there. So that's us. That's uh, us collectively, individually. And Jupiter is like this happy, beautiful, blessing-filled energy that says, I'll give, what, I'll give you what you need. Mm. Just make sure you know what you need don't need, you know, don't, don't, I mean, Jupiter has a tendency to be frivolous. I, I don't know that I would say that for, for everything, but Jupiter is, is magnanimous and it wants to give, and it's very wealth oriented in all ways, wealth meaning wellness as well as monetary wealth. So it wants to give. Um, some people say Jupiter might be too extravagant. Um, I just say, Jupiter wants to enjoy the process. So what do you need? Jupiter will want to give us what we need. But I think with the whole Saturn Pluto thing, it's like really just really be clear. When it's really measured as well. It's yeah. what do you need? Enjoy the process of, yeah. of getting what you need to come back to center, exactly. come back to the core, but not in, not in excess, not in excess. And that's the thing like traditional astrologers, would say that Jupiter um, is not happy in Capricorn because <laughs> Jupiter mm -hmm. is like, uh, party, what are we doing? Holding Let's me back. Go. Yeah, what are you doing? But the truth is Jupiter's fine in Capricorn. I tell you, my, my relationship with Jupiter had shown me that Jupiter's like, wow, this is actually great because you're telling me what you need. It's clear and it's concise because it's Capricorn and it's measured. It's Capricorn and it evolves over time. It's Capricorn, which evolves over time. So, so, so Jupiter's just like, great, I'll just beam down what you need. And, and in a sense, if I were, if I were Jupiter after spending a year in Sagittarius, I'd need a rest anyway. So, <laughs> For sure. You know, it's like <laughs> it's been all party, 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 yeah. talk, talk, talk. <laughs> so when I when I when I when I talk to the plant, the planets actually talk to me a lot, as you know. Mm -hmm. And so I can I love Jupiter's energy this year 
because I feel like Jupiter is really supporting us, supporting ourselves. I mean, that's just kind of the bottom line. And then at the end of the year, so everything right now that's happening, activating this weekend, it comes to its full unfolding on December 20th and 21st of this year. Okay. And Jupiter will move into Aquarius. So it will leave Capricorn, Saturn will leave Capricorn, and things will shift into a different time and energy. So this year, let's be doing what you're saying. Let's be clear. Let's let go of what we don't really need. Let's let go of the excess. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and be as honest with ourselves as we can, you know? There's, um, there's other energies at play right now in this activation without uh, going into too much more detail. Let's just say that if you're, if you're feeling left out of something, ask yourself, you know, you know, people talk about this fear of missing out. Oh yeah. FOMO. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, ask yourself, is that really what you want to be doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, really, truly, mm -hmm. is that what you want to be doing? And if it is great, then do it. But ask yourself what's underneath my fear of missing out? What's that really about? Go deeper. Pluto says go deeper, 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 deeper. Ask the deeper questions before responding from a place of the fear of missing out. Mm, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to add as we come to the end. And I, I, I think that it uh, highlights the fact that in a, in a you know, in continuation with all the uh, abundance and superfluousness that's around us, there's so much information now also, mm -hmm. which I think mm -hmm. in 2019, there was just an explosion of information of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, do this diet, eat this, do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've mm -hmm. got the solution for you. I've got the mm -hmm. answer. Um, and really what is true is that nothing could be more right for you than what your own body says, what is mm -hmm. personal to you. Um, so it's, mm -hmm. it's about really letting go of all of the information mm -hmm. and all of that uh, noise that's around us and coming back to center mm -hmm. and retooling and trusting your own guidance and trusting your own connection to earth and to your guides and uh, really walking that path forward and taking it with us this whole year while we really need to be conscious observers of what's happening around us because yeah, we've got an election. It's going to be interesting to say the least. It's going to look completely chaotic at times. Um, I'm sure lots of moments of us shaking our heads thinking, how can this be? But really, it's all a play and we are actors in this play watching this whole thing unfold. So as Jupiter says, just enjoy it. <laughs> just enjoy it, right? Yeah. Be, you know, Saturn's like, do your work. Pluto's like, do your healing. Yep. And, and, and enjoy the blessings and enjoy along the, blessings. the way. Absolutely. Yeah. And there will be many, there will be many, there'll be ups there and downs be. and yeah. all arounds, but absolutely. And I think that it's going to be um, really interesting for all of those seekers out there who have been spent years developing their path and understanding mm -hmm. who they are mm -hmm. to now really just sink into who they are and allow that to blossom and flourish and um, not look outside themselves so much. So I really, really, yes. really, um, I'm excited about that. It really mm -hmm. feels like now is the time to be yeah. within um, ourselves and then to allow that flower to bloom and really express ourselves from our true self. Yes, that was beautifully said. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Denise, it's such a pleasure to see you. Um, for anyone who's interested, you can contact Denise directly and I will put her information up for a personal healing session. They are absolutely fantastic. I'm sorry, I said personal healing session. I mean, they are healing, actually. Yeah. They are. <laughs> they really are. You do a little bit of everything. <clears throat> you bring in not only guidance and a year's forecast, but you have all kinds of things on your menu. Everything from what you uh, do with women and teens to what you're doing with adults and um, of all walks of life, male and female, but um, especially what you're doing with women is absolutely fantastic. So I really encourage you to look into Denise's work a bit more and go to her website mm -hmm. and uh, contact her directly. Thank you so much, Denise. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>